fish. Slaughtered it all the way to the boat right there. Come here, big boy. Man, these fish that come out of this clear water like this is just got that golden look. That's a pretty little fish right there. Yeah, what we're doing is we're fishing the edges of grass lines and just slow rolling that shad pole right over the top. Number 224 is that chartreuse pepper. That's one of my favorite colors. You go anywhere in America and use that color, it's the real deal. Hey, uh, just add cornmeal, right? <laughs> right now, these crappie are on the spawn and what they're relating to is these grass lines. And so, as you can see, I'm using the uh, Mega 360 and I can see the edge of the grass line right here. And I'm looking at that grass sitting out there about 40 feet. And so what I'm doing is I'm casting to the eelgrass and pulling it right over the top of it and letting it fall. And I've got my boat set in 10 foot of water and that eelgrass quits growing in about 10 foot and I get right on the edge and I'm pulling this shad pole with an eighth ounce jig head on it, just a slow roll. That you know, you can find where you start tipping the top of the eelgrass and then just roll it. And then them fish are just hitting it when it comes right off that edge, when it drops. So what I'm keying in on is when I start catching these fish and moving to pocket to pocket because the grass right now is really sparse. It's not everywhere and so you can actually look at your depth finder and see where there's a little ditch that comes around the backside of one of those pockets of uh, grass. And what you're trying to do is cast up on the grass, pull it over the grass, and it drops into that pocket. So, but when you start, when you catch one, there's going to be several in that area that you can just keep catching them. Because when they're on the spawn, several hundred crappie will spawn in one area. And so, there's a stretch of grass here, probably uh, 200 feet long. And so you can go along and be looking for these pockets that cuts into the edge of this grass, especially if you have a depth finder like this. But if you don't, just look at your regular 2D to where you see where that grass kind of cuts in and you run out of grass and you can follow that edge all the way around. But stay on the edge and cast into the grass. We'll think about this fish right here. Come on, brother. Where are you going? Where are you trying to go? Huh? Where are you going? Mm-hmm. Come on in here to daddy. Whoa! Man, these are little chunks now. Mmm. Chunky, chunky. Fish has been in there rubbing on that grass been fanning that grass. You see that? Right there. That fish has been in there fanning the nest. See how it's red right there on the bottom? You can actually see where it's just worn down where that male fish is in there fanning. You know for somebody that is just getting started into crappie fishing or just going fishing and you're trying to find areas to fish, you know having a depth finder is very important but you just gotta learn what your depth finder is actually showing you, whether it's the grass, stumps, lay downs, uh, any type of brush. But, you know, back in the days when I started, we had to line up like on points and what we would do is find a structure up on the land, like maybe it might be a tree and then it might be a stake in the ground, it might be a fireplace on a house and you just line that fireplace up with something that's on the edge of the water and you just fish out straight from it and you can drive right over the brush. Like that house right there, it's got a steeple on the top of it and the steeple is right there in the window on that house and I can come back to this spot anytime, maybe a hundred yards off the bank and get this same spot and not even use a depth finder. So, when you're out on the lake, just pay attention to landmarks. When you start catching fish, just pay attention to the landmarks and you can go back to that spot every time. Now don't do it on a trailer house because they'll move it on you. <laughs> when I'm out here casting like this and trying to get distance uh, in open water and you can stay back off the structure, 
I use an eighth ounce head. I can get the distance on it. And then I use my reel to keep that speed going, just to keep it up, keep the, keep the lure up in the water column. See that bite right there? You just a little tick. Come on, boy. Pull on that rod. Come up in here. Come on. That one right there, I might have to measure him, but uh, today we're using the new Wally Marshall Classic. Actually, it's not new. You know, back in the beginning when I started with Bass Pro Shops in 1997, I designed the Wally Marshall Signature Series. We're going back to the classic, the original Wally Marshall rods. So that little puppy right there, he's probably not 10, so I'm gonna pitch him back. This rod right here is a seven footer. And I like the seven foot model because I think I can move a fish a lot better with a longer rod. And that cast right there is probably 75 feet, just with ease. When you're rolling the jig through the grass and you're just tipping it, but when the difference between the grass and the crappie strike, that crappie's gonna thump it. The grass doesn't thump it. You just pull into it, it gets kind of sticky and you just pull, pull right through it just like that right there. But the, when the crappie hits it, he's gonna knock the fire out of it. See how it's kind of just ticking the grass right there? It was just kind of hanging in there. But when you're just slow rolling it, you'll never forget a crappie strike is a lot different than bumping, ticking that grass. But the, you know, you're using a soft tip rod, you can just feel that the top of that weed, you know, when it's coming through there, that eel grass. I'm just trying to stay out on the edge of it. Sometimes I throw in it, come over the top, and they'll come up by that eel grass and they'll hit it. Right there. Right there, boys. Woo, he mad. Ooh, look at that pretty crappie right there. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Oh, he's got a little skin on the side of him. That's all right. Man, I hate it when it gets it right there in that, right there in the nose. Man, beautiful fish. No, I'm using six pound high-vis line. I know this water is clear as a bell, but when it's low light conditions, you can watch your line at all times. And I'm more of a line watcher than I am feeling it on my rod because you can see that line jump when those fish hit it, whether you're fishing boat docks or casting out here on the lake. And uh, somebody asked me one time, said, Wally, does that high-vis high line scare the fish? And I said, yeah, I got about 100 in the freezer right now. It scared every one of them. <laughs> you know, a lot of people think of crappie fishing it's like, man, I don't want to go crappie fishing because it's too slow. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this right here, when you're casting and catching fish, you know, every other cast you're catching one, I'm telling you, it's not too slow, folks. And I'm telling you, since uh, COVID hit, there has been a lot of new crappie fishing come into play because you can take your family out, catch crappie, uh, the kiddos can do it. You can do it from 8 to 80, you know. And uh, I just love feeling that thump on my line. So be sure next time somebody asks you to go crappie fishing, you ought to take them up on it.